So when we asked parents and teachers the most important skill set that their students need in life, parents named mental health as the most important, followed by reading. And mental health was in teachers' top five. And the majority of both parents and teachers feel that teachers should and can focus on this broader definition of success in the classroom. We're also hearing this directly from students. The Pew Research Center did a survey and found that 96% of adolescents, almost all of them, name depression and anxiety as a problem amongst their peers. And 70% of them named it as a major problem. And we know these emotions are at play in our schools. Mark Brackett and the team at the Center for Emotional Intelligence at Yale interviewed thousands of high school students. And these were the main emotions that they expressed feeling. We do see happy there, but we also see stressed, bored, tired, anxious, as prevailing emotions that our students are feeling. And it's similar for our educators. They're feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, stressed, as some of those core emotions. And so we know the need is clear, and the demand is clear, but we can't get to solutions without turning back to that asset-based lens and thinking about how do we actually address this. So I want to move into how we define mental health through that asset-based lens. And we anchor on a number of frameworks that drive the way that we partner and invest in the field. And the first is one from the team at the University of Wisconsin-Madison at the Center for Healthy Minds. They're led by Richie Davidson, who's a neuroscientist who studies well-being. And he's named these four key areas as critical to well-being in students and adults. So the first is awareness. How are we aware of ourselves and finding the ability to be present in the moment? Like you're doing right now. Distractions left and right, but you're focusing in on the signal up here and the talk that I'm giving. Connection. Those relationships with others driven by empathy, compassion, gratitude, that are critical for our healthy development. Insight is that deep knowledge of ourselves, what makes us tick, what might trigger us, and in particular, it's really understanding that we're constantly evolving. And then purpose. Having that really intentional focus on how you can contribute to the world in a way that's meaningful to you and of, a, of consequence beyond you. So these are four very broad key areas of what it means to be healthy and grounded in well-being. But again, they're very broad and we can't just snap our fingers and make this happen for our students. And so we ground in another framework, in addition with a number of our partners, called the Building Blocks for Learning. And this is a framework that I developed in partnership with the Turnaround for Children team. And we'll talk more about this with Pam in, in a bit. It's a developmental framework that draws from developmental psychology, cognitive neuroscience, social psychology, to present a developmental trajectory toward higher order non-academic skills. It's grounded in that critical cornerstone of healthy adult attachment, and then suggests the skills that ladder up to higher order skills like resilience and self-direction. There are a lot of frameworks out there, and we're all anchoring on different definitions of whole child, but there's also a lot of commonality. We see the focus on what we typically define as social-emotional skills here, those inter- and intrapersonal skills that drive relationships and learning. We see the work of, of the scholars that focus on mindset, things like growth mindset, sense of belonging. 
And we also see some of the core constructs that are driven in a trauma-informed environment. Let's focus in on resilience really briefly, because I want to drive a key point home here. If we think about resilience as being a set of skills that help us to persevere through challenging times and actually protect us against some adversity, the skills under resilience in this framework are proven in the research to drive it. But it's not an individual skill set. Not only do we focus on these individual skills, but the context around us is critical for resilience as well. So community, relationships, and culture drive this skill, and frankly drive all of these skills. It's what we've learned from the multiple sciences of human development and learning connected to these constructs. In terms of those sciences, we could spend the rest of this time and frankly, the rest of this week, naming the evidence that shows that mental health and wellness, as we're defining it, is key to learning. We've partnered with multiple organizations to synthesize and codify this science. And it's helped us understand that it matters from, early adult, from birth to early adulthood. The knowledge that relationships and connection actually build our brain starting in infancy, to the fact that sense of purpose is a core driver of perseverance and completion of college. But mental health and well-being is absolutely critical for the engagement in learning, in the process of learning. Our evolutionary success as humans is due to our emotions and our ability to socially connect. Because of that, those functions are intertwined with the cognitive, cognitive processes that drive learning. Attention, memory, decision making, motivation. We cannot tease these things apart. And they matter not just in the moments of learning, but in the way that we apply those learnings in the world outside, which is a social structure and emotions matter there. Before I move on to the why, from the why to the how, I want to share one study. Researchers put four-year-olds on swings. And they swung some in sync and they swung some of them out of sync. Then the students were brought back into the classroom to complete a task. The students who were swung in sync were better listeners with each other, they were better collaborators, and they were more effective at completing the task. Now, I'm not sharing this because I expect you to go back and swing all of your kids in sync on swing sets. The message is more about intentionality. We don't leave learning algebra or learning persuasive writing up to chance. We don't count on a poster or a morning meeting to deliver those skills. We design, we plan, we're intentional and we ground that in learning science. And the skills that drive mental health and well-being are no different. That intentionality is absolutely critical. It's also absolutely critical when we think about equity. We're focused on this deeply. And it's not just that we have to understand that we see toxic stress or chronic stress impacting the learning centers of the brain that are responsible for attention and memory. How do we impact students' mental health in an inequitable learning environment? What are we doing to their insight and their awareness when we don't recognize their cultures and ensure that those cultures are represented in their school? 
How do we impact their belonging when we don't attend to implicit and implicit bias that, their folk, that exists in a lot of our schools? We need to invest in the science to learn more about answers to these questions, but we also have to ground a lot of our answers in the space of practice and getting from that why to the how. So I want to bring us there.